Okay, hi there. Welcome to a revision video where we're going to spend a few minutes exploring the links between the value of the coefficient of price elasticity of demand and the extent to which businesses can make high levels of profit. So why is the coefficient of elasticity of demand important for any business wanting to increase their profits? Well, crucially, uh, the elasticity of demand gives us a sense, a measure of the responsiveness of consumer demand to a change in price. And when the elasticity of demand is low, in other words, when the coefficient is less than one, then consumers are less sensitive to the price that's being charged. In theory, they have a lot of consumer surplus, which businesses can possibly extract and then turn into higher revenue and depending on their costs higher profits. And many of you will have covered in your year 13 economics, the economics of price discrimination, where essentially you target different groups of consumers, you segment the market and charge different prices based in part on willingness and ability to pay. Let's look at a couple of examples in this short video. First of all, let's take an example when demand or average revenue is priced inelastic and the impact that this can have on a firm's profit margins. I'm going to be using cost and revenue curve analysis here, which is uh, traditionally associated with year 13 micro. So here we have a fairly inelastic demand curve. The average and marginal revenue curves are both downward sloping. Let's superimpose some cost curves on here, some marginal and average costs. And a profit maximizing firm will produce an output of Q1, which allows them to sell at a price of P1. A uh, high price, of course, because demand is fairly inelastic. There's the unit cost of the same output level, AC1, and therefore the shaded area represents the amount of monopoly profit. Now, I think the key takeaway point from here is that when demand is inelastic, when the coefficient of, uh, of demand, price elasticity of demand, is less than one, this allows the firm often to charge quite a high profit maximizing price and make a substantial margin on each unit sold. There is, of course, still plenty of consumer surplus left to extract, and you might well move away from there being one price through price discrimination, perhaps try and target different groups of consumers who are willing to pay even a bit more than P1. But I think this is a good diagram to draw when you're trying to show a monopoly making high profits, especially when demand is price inelastic. And of course, the key here is that the price is well above average and well above marginal cost, leading to a loss of allocative efficiency. So I think this is a really good analysis diagram for this kind of discussion. So typically, when price elasticity is low, less than one, firms can take advantage by raising their prices. Total revenue will definitely go up, and depending on their costs, they might also make a higher margin, a profit margin. Now, one way of measuring this is the gap, the difference between average revenue and average cost. Now, price elasticity with demand will tend to be low, quick revision of year 12, when there are relatively few close substitutes in the market. In other words, there's a, the market is dominated by just a few products. And also when brand loyalty is strong, and when there are costs of switching from one competing product to another. Now, what about the alternative? What about when demand is priced elastic, when consumers are sensitive to changes in price? What, what effect can this have? on a firm's profit margins. Well, here we go, I've drawn this demand curve, average revenue curve as highly price sensitive, marginal revenue costs falling below. Let's put those same cost curves on, marginal average cost, and a profit maximizing firm will produce output Q1, charge the price P1, and there's the unit cost AC1. But can you see here that the extent to which the firm can raise price is lower in this situation. Yes, they can make some profit, but the profit margin, the gap between price and cost is much lower. Often in these industries that the total profit comes not from selling a high, making a high profit per unit, but from selling a lot of units where output is high. The sale of volume, the volume sales of a product, <coughs> pardon me, volume sales is where you can make, make your profits. So when price elasticity of demand is high, then profit margins tend to be low. There's less consumer surplus to be exploited and consumers are price sensitive. And typically, uh, we tend to find this in more competitive, more contestable markets where there are many substitutes available for buyers to choose from, where brand loyalty may be fairly weak 
and therefore the elasticity will be high. And this reduces the monopoly power of existing firms. As a result, the margins made will be lower. Indeed, if you go to a perfect competition, you may well have covered this. The coefficient of price elasticity demand is infinite. Each firm is a price taker. And of course, in the long run, they will only make normal profits because of the free entry of firms. So what we've covered here is the relationship between the value of coefficient of elasticity of demand and the extent to which firms can make high or low levels of profit. I think it's quite an important relationship to understand, particularly in your year 13 economics, when you come to try and analyse and evaluate different market structures. Huge thanks for joining in. Thanks for taking, uh, taking a few moments to join us today. Look after yourselves. See you again sometime soon.